All right, today I want to specifically address uh, the repair of this Panasonic SN board. The part number on this board is a TNPA5349. That's Tom Nancy Paul Adam 5349. This one happens to be the AB version. And it's a fairly common problem with these sets. Uh, I've had several of these now. And I just want to show you the ohm meter if uh, maybe you can see it here. And the, the problem that we're having is we've got a dead short across the SN2 connector. This is the V sustain voltage. It reads 0.2 ohms to ground. Normally that should be about 180 to 210 volts approximately. And with that 2 ohms to ground we're not going to have much luck firing up the set. I'm just going to put my meter on the diode scale and there's a bunch of these uh, I IGBTs integrated gate bipolar transistor and we'll just get across here and check them these are all in parallel with each other and these are a couple diodes over here they are shorted as well it just so happens that there are companies that make repair kits for these boards uh, this one happens to be a TXN SN1 PKUU repair kit. This one is from shopjimmy.com. And I just wanted to talk to you about replacing this kit. Uh, these are all surface mount components. These four transistors, one, two, three, four. These are the resistors. They are surface mount resistors. They're very small. One, two, three, four and these two diodes. So let's open the kit up and see what we have in the box. Okay, the kit comes with full instructions as far as here's your parts. These are the resistor part numbers R401, 402, 421, 422. Here are your transistor part numbers Q401, 402, 421, 422 and the diode D401 and D421. So how I like to do it on these sets is I take two of my workbenches, I set them side by side so that I have an open area right in the middle here and I'm going to balance the board right in between there with the defective components trying to get them centered up right in the middle here. And then there's nothing special to getting the parts off of the board. I'm going to take my handy dandy uh, paint stripper gun. This one they're about ten dollars from Harbor Freight Tools. They come in quite handy. And the other thing I like to do is I'm going to add a little bit of flux. I just got this flux from uh, I think it was Lowe's or the Home Depot and it's really it's water soluble. It's really easy to get off once you're done with it. It's just a, a yellowish orange paste is all it is. So I'm just going to take the tip of my screwdriver and add a little bit of flux to the tip. I'm going to pre-flux all the parts I want to get off the board. The tops and the bottoms, all the pins on them. That might be a little bit too much. This helps the solder flow a little bit easier. And I'm trying to do this without any special tools that everybody wouldn't have. Well, that should be good. So I've got all four transistors and the two diodes fluxed up and ready to go. Next, I'm going to turn my heat gun on low. There's high. I'm just going to use low and I'm just going to put it up underneath here. And I'm just going to heat up this area, this general vicinity. It's going to take me probably a minute or two of just back and forth bottom heating the board before the parts get close to being molten the solder will become molten enough that I can actually lift the components right off of the circuit board make sure that you pay very close attention to the orientation of the components so you get them back in the same way you want the four transistors in the same four locations or they are clearly labeled uh, the polarity of the resistors is not important while this is heating up, one main thing that can cause 
failures like this in these Panasonic TVs are these ground screws. I did a video on the loose ground screws. So you always want to make sure that your ground screws are nice and tight. Preferably have them replaced with the newer style with the integrated lock washer. So you don't run into problems that way. If you're looking close, you can see that the paste is starting to bubble. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit to make it a little easier. You can see the paste here is starting to bubble just a little bit. I'm going to try to move this down. Hopefully it won't be too, too jerky. So this is all done in actual time. I haven't stopped the camera. Once I'm satisfied that it's beginning to get close to the melting point of the solder, I'm just going to concentrate the heat gun under one part for a few seconds. Then I'm going to simply move it over to the top of the circuit board. I'm going to apply heat to it. It should only take about 10 seconds. Keep in mind this is all done on low. I have not used the heat gun on high. That first one lifted right off. Once all three pins become molten, it'll just lift off the circuit board quite easily. Be very careful not to disrupt any other parts nearby. These are hard to grab. There are those. These cooled off just a little bit. It might take 20 seconds of heat to get them ready to become molten to lift off the board. That one's almost there. The tab's molten. This one should have taken some of the heat from the uh, first one, so it should be a little bit quicker. And now for the two final diodes. Well, let me get these resistors off the board here. Okay, I've got all the parts off the board. Okay, I've got my four transistors, my two diodes, and my four resistors all opened and ready to go. All right, next I'm gonna add fresh flux to the, all the pads while the parts are going to go. Help them take on the new solder a little bit easier. Remember, this is water soluble, so it will all wash off very easily once everything is done. Then once again, I'm just gonna start with my heat gun by preheating the bottom of the board. I'm gonna take one of my new components and just place it close to where it needs to be. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. I'm gonna heat the bottom for probably about 30 seconds. And I'm only going to concentrate on this one part at this point, so I'm not moving the heat gun back and forth.
Now I'm going to move it to the top. I'm going to heat the component. When it gets ready, it should actually move, and you just saw it move, it drops into place. Next, I'm going to set the little resistor in place. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to take the solder, and there it is, all ready to go. So let me add the next one. It's very hard to add these little resistors standing up to make the video. I'll put that one on kind of crooked so you can see what happens. There you saw the, the resistor pop into place. And the transistor just took its solder, it just settled down there. So those two parts are soldered on the board and ready to go. Sometimes you can do a little test. You can move them around to make sure that they're actually molten to the board. So hopefully from that you can see how to replace the other parts. I'm not just going to go into detail and show you how to do each one individually. But uh, hopefully with this you can get your Panasonic TV up and running and we can keep a few more of these boards out of the trash, keep the TVs out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin. With your help, once again, we can do that. I appreciate your views, your comments, and your support. I just wanted to make a real quick video this time showing you how to replace these components without a bunch of ex extravagant tools. One thing you really want to watch out for anytime there are electrolytic capacitors, you want to keep the heat pointed away from the capacitors because once they get too hot, they can vent and uh, they can be very dangerous. So once again, I hope you enjoyed this video on repairing this Panasonic SN board. Uh, visit Shop Jimmy. They have other repair kits available for many other circuit boards. And they have the whole circuit boards in some cases as well. Everybody have a great day. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.